This video is brought to you by Calm, formerly known as Shop Tagger. It is an app and Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. More on this later. What's up guys? Salut! Welcome back to the fried rice series where I'm trying to perfect the ultimate chow fan at a restaurant level. For that, in the previous episode, I bought a super professional laden, but I also bought this beautiful, authentic Cantonese wok. I also built this stir frying practice rig for me to just be able to try. Unfortunately, none of this is worth anything if I don't build a solid primer of theory first. So, theory it is. Oops. Now, when it comes to learning new skills, new culinary skills, YouTube is my go-to, okay? Like, for example, when I learned how to wrap up the world's best omelette by chef and legend Jacques Pépin. I love a little drama. When I did that, I used a YouTube video. So my guts right now are telling me to look for a Chinese stir-frying tutorial on YouTube. The situation here is a little different and a little more complicated. You see, I've got two main obstacles on my road. First of all, authentic Chinese cooking is not that common on YouTube. Westernized Chinese food, you can find this everywhere, but authentic, nah. Second obstacle, there are a few channels who do authentic Chinese cooking, but they usually focus on home cooking recipes. I'm looking for restaurant technique tutorial. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack right here. Now, I may possibly be the luckiest b on earth because I've managed to find one stir frying tutorial on YouTube. It has English subtitles hosted by a super legitimate uh, chef, uh, Chef Wang. He uses a Cantonese wok over a restaurant stove. Now, as much as I enjoy this video, I'm basically looking for more details. For example, how should I position my fingers? How should I place my body? How much force should I apply? Also about the motion, it would be so useful to see things being actually tossed in the walk, and I'm missing all these little details. It's gonna be complicated to make progress. Now remember, this is not my comfort zone. This is not an omelette video of me. I need more perspectives on the subject. We are talking about China, the most populated country on the planet. So very likely the country with the greatest populations of chefs. There should be hundreds of tutorials like this one on YouTube. On YouTube, on YouTube. On YouTube. YouTube is completely blocked in China. You can't access them in China. YouTube block in China. On YouTube. <laughs> okay, and now a quick word from our sponsor, Karma. Karma used to be called Shop Tagger. Their new name represents the good karma they provide by helping you shop smart. I often search the web for new cooking gear and I currently have my eyes on some cool stuff. Now these prices can vary a lot from one day to the other so it's great to have an app like Karma monitoring any price change for me and to save money by doing so. You can download the Chrome extension on your computer and visit any of your favorite stores. Get notifications by email or mobile push when an item you have saved goes on sale, has a relevant coupon, or when it comes back in stock. Organize your items into multiple wish lists so you can shop more intelligently during these times. Karma scans the webs for coupon codes and applies them at checkout automatically. This is a special feature if you use Karma on your computer, so the Chrome extension is great for this. And finally, you can even earn cash via PayPal when you shop from selected retail partners. Check the link below to get Karma's Chrome extension. Thank you, Karma, for sponsoring this video. On YouTube. <laughs> I need to find the Chinese equivalent of YouTube. Translate it to English. Try a few research in English. Oh, 
Oh no! Fair enough. I guess I just have to learn how to speak Chinese then. Ni hao. Wo jiao li hua. Uh, wo jiao ming shi Alex. Huh? No. Teacher B. Baba Cho Yando. Ah. Well, there clearly is a problem with this app. So instead, I decided to start with English terms, get them translated, and then use this output in Bilibili. Uh, in all fairness, it worked so so. I guess the closest I've found to a stir frying tutorial is this video. I copied the Chinese characters and reverse translate it. The chef turns the pot with great momentum, the roar of the fierce stir fry, the action is chic and I love it. Somewhere in this sentence lies the key to unlocking this mystery. Stir fry didn't work out before so I love it, not great. Action is chic, uh, undecided. Turn the pot. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, hundreds of tutorials on the subject. Well, I guess the only thing left for me now is just to uh, watch them all. After having spent hours and hours searching, I have found three hidden gems. Let me introduce you to number one, Zhang Yuan Meishi, as known as the gourmet champion. I call this guy the boxing champion. You, you'll understand why in a second. You've rarely seen a kitchen that sparkingly clean. The two handles should not be at the same height. The furthest away from you should always be slightly below the other one. And also, this guy is all about building some muscle memory. That's why he is my boxing champion, because he's always practicing. Two hands, one hand. The other one... So basically I should start practicing with two hands first. Like this, down, up, pull, down, up, pull. And I should try to feel the weight of the walk, the momentum, the inertia. It's almost like this hand is moving in a circle. And then allegedly once you feel comfortable with two hands and that you have a very symmetrical movement, you should be able to switch to one hand and keep the walk in a straight line, which I'm failing at at the moment. This guy also explained how to hold the ladle with the index pointing forward, see? A strong grip. Let's move on to number two. Da Chu Tsai Quan Jiang. But I call him El Professor. I love this guy. Hello, I'm if the first video was all about the move, the momentum, the rhythm, this video is more about your interaction with the walk through the handle. First of all, I need to use a towel for this, like a small spongy towel. Every chef has a, a, a specific and personal way to fold that towel, but in the end, it should always end up being very thick and have some sort of a spring-loaded action to it. 
the cloth must be sparkingly clean. It's more than just a tool. It's also like your reputation as a chef. I like when people just share a little more than just what is obvious. Mm -hmm. So why do I call him El Profesor? Being talented is one thing, but being a great teacher is another thing. He's calm, he explains things in a very clear way, and yet he remains very casual in his own speech. I shouldn't be holding the walk handle in the center. I should be holding it on the side, what he called the triangle. The thumb needs power to resist the handle, while the index finger will be used to put some leverage into this. I'm gonna have to use all the other fingers as a support underneath. And this way, I should be able to lift that up. Looks simple, but I'm shaking like crazy. Ah, fuck's sake. So that's for number two now. Let's talk about treasure number three. The Hao Mei Shi Gongzhou Shu. But I call this guy poker face. 台上一分钟, 台下, this guy is just like on another level. The stance, the balance, the core strength this guy has out of this world. Wow. That's a bold one. Pam, pam, pam. What I have understand the most about this video is the importance the stance of the balance of how you distribute your whole weight how you position yourself compared to the walk that's impossible he says i should be holding the walk with the ladle with two pounds of rice for one minute i just want to see where i stand in all this three two one Man, the pain in my wrist and in my thumb. I'm definitely not poker face. <laughs> Look at this, this is the poker face I told you about. This is him having the best time of his life. And here, it's him in atrocious pain. What can you read on his face? I should position myself slightly on the side in order to have a bit more room for this arm to move more freely. I should stand about 10 cm from the walk, be straight, have a poker face, which is gonna be hard for me. The shoulder should lead the elbow, the elbow should lead the wrist. I love this, even though for me at this moment it makes no sense. I'm making micro steps at the moment. I'm so happy, I'm so glad, I'm so relieved almost that I didn't let the language barrier stop me because I'm French in the first place. I don't speak like this, je parle comme ça en vrai. Ça c'est ma vraie langue. So I can't see why language should be any barrier for me. It shouldn't be. Otherwise I would never have discovered these immensely talented individuals. It really is a small world after all. I need now to to put in some dedication and some perseverance and I need not to give up halfway, obviously. Easier said than done. This is it guys, this is it. I, I, I have no excuse left no more. I've got the gear, I've got the walk, I've got the ladle, I've got the practice rig and I've got the knowledge. I know how I should be moving the walk. I know how I should be gripping the walk and I know finally how I should be standing, how I should balance my weight and my strength with it. Now obviously the only thing left is just to practice, practice, practice. And that is exactly what I intend to do in the next episode. <laughs> so in the meantime, you take care, bye bye, salut.